Welcome to Moto's Cades and Coffee. Hey, good afternoon guys. It's Andy from Moto's Cades and Coffee. I'm about to go pick up my Royal Enfield Himalayan with the big bore kit and cam installed from the dino shop. Trust me, you're going to be shocked at these numbers. As a reminder, I took my motorcycle to MRP Motorsports in Pasadena, Maryland. Uh, Kenny did the work and I had a 462 big bore kit, performance camshaft, smooth air intake inlet, a and air filter, Powertronics ECU, and O2 block off. And I was expecting a about 10 horsepower gain over normal. Himalayans do about 19 horsepower stock on the dyno. And I was expecting, hoping to get about 10 horsepower gain. Without further ado, let me show you the number. And there is the number right there. 24.82 horsepower and 24.39 max torque. So basically stock Himalayan numbers for all that work. Um, I will say that I'm pretty disappointed to be honest with you. I thought I'd get more. I did not. And I'm going to go talk to the tech about it. I want to tell you what he said about tuning. We did, he did 90 runs. Most of those were part throttle because he was having issues with some of the fueling. And also uh, he did about 12 max horsepower runs. The torque curve and the horsepower curve looked pretty normal for what uh, the cam and big bore kit look like, but I think it's about a four to five horsepower less than what I was expecting. All right, guys, I'm at a MRP Motorsports. I'm picking up my motorcycle. I'm gonna share the dyno numbers. We're gonna go talk with uh, Kenny. He's the one that did all the work on it. Um, hopefully we get a little uh, talking with him, but I'm gonna tell you, he told me he did about 90 runs on the Himalayan. There's a couple challenges. I'm gonna show you a couple things that we had to do and what took so long. Um, before we get to the numbers, let's we'll go talk about it and uh, then I'll give you my ride review. Okay, so I, the biggest problem we were having is we couldn't stick a, uh, a probe down the stock exhaust. So I ended up trying to get a new exhaust, but there was no place to, to put it on. Um, and we couldn't test, there's an O2 sensor in the exhaust and we couldn't unplug the exhaust uh, to get to that O2 sensor because um, uh, the computer needed it. The power powertronics needed the O2 sensor, so we couldn't stick a sensor in, in where the O2 bung is. So he ended up welding a new bung in right there. And he used that uh, downstream of the normal O2 to get the uh, proper ratings on the air fuel. He also did the uh, valve lash and change the oil since my big bore kit. Uh, so let's go see if we can talk to Kenny and talk about the, the dyno chart and numbers. So again, real quickly, you said you did what, like 90 runs or something like that? Yeah, so this last run, the first 100% run I did was number 23. The last one was 90. Okay, right. and how many 100% so, runs do you think you did? Uh, probably like 12 or okay. 15. Okay, yeah. all right. So these, these are, um, so this is just your first 100% run that we okay. did, and then your last. The only real benefit here is the difference in air fuel. The timing was the same, and mostly up top. Okay. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, okay. This is what I'm talking about here. So this was, uh, run 12 was one of your first, uh, this is 40% throttle in okay. this example, all right? And then this is run 76. So this would have been probably like, two or three changes on the 40 percent okay all right so the way for the way this uh ecu or this program works yeah i have to go through and do all the tests all right and then i come back and i open each throttle position graph right and then make changes to the ecu and then read and write to it okay because it won't change it while i'm on the fly oh so you have to so i have to go through so every throttle position that's in that wow powertronics I have to do a run in, so I would do a 13% and then 16 and oh, 20. And, and then you have to save it, right? Cause it, well, all the, all the runs get saved. Okay. And then you go back through each run okay. and go through those throttle positions. And typically, you know, on most programs, you'll have at 13% air fuel. Yes. All right. If you're at 13.5 or, right, you okay. can add or take away five. It's usually 
one percent per point right? okay uh on that one it was a little bit different sometimes it was um i don't really know what it was but i would have to do five for like three percent or something like that okay. um, so there was a little bit of discrepancy there plus that program also so like on a power commander they have the same feature most programs do they have what's called a tracking point so you have your spreadsheet grid set up okay and it'll it'll highlight which cell that program is reading or what the bike is running off of right okay so you can use a load control at that point and kind of hold it in that cell right and then add or take away fuel based on that okay. um, because this wouldn't do it live we couldn't really do that particular feature we had to do it with runs but this one would highlight four cells. And then it uh, gives you at the bottom, so what it typically, what I think it was doing was it would take the average of those cells around there and then come up with a fuel change for that particular one, but it wasn't very exact. So like if the two cells, like say I was in 13%, yes, and I was at 4,500 RPM. Okay. Um, and there was a cell, there was a, uh, a data point there. Uh -huh. The program might have that data point highlighted plus the throttle percentage above it. Say if we were doing 16 at 45, it would be at 20 at 45. Okay. And then it would have 20 at 5,000 highlighted and it would have 16 at 5,000. So those four, and then if you looked at whatever it said it was delivering, oh, it wouldn't match that one cell where you had the bike at. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Okay. So you kind of had to play around with it to get it to. So that's why it took so long on this one. Yeah, I mean. Uh, and then so so this is rich and this is lean. Is that how that's what? Is, am yeah, I reading exactly. this? Okay. So ten parts fuel for every part air, eighteen parts uh, air for every part fuel. Um, and so we still have this little dip that's occurring. Yeah. So if I if I leaned uh, your five thousand out. Yes. All right. To bring that out. It would actually lean it out back here, but if I leaned out, so your your data points were five thousand, yeah, at forty percent, or it was at fifty five hundred at forty percent. Do you do you think that's going to affect drivability or or just? I mean, um, a little a little bump you'll notice, but not. Like... I mean, on this thing, probably not. Okay. Uh, but I mean, you can see a little bit of a dip right there where it dips down it. at or whatever you know whether you can feel that or not i mean um okay some guys feel a lot when they ride bikes you know they got a little bit more sensitivity in their ass yeah some guys don't i mean i've worked with riders on the track where we can make a two click change and they're like okay yeah that's better or worse and other guys i got to make five or six clicks before they feel it um, um okay how so, was how was um how was the bike when it got on the dyno? Like, was there any strapping issues or anything like that? Or was it just pretty easy to get on the dyno and, and get no, it set up? No, strapping was easy. The biggest thing with the stock exhaust was it's, it's got chambers, so we couldn't use a sniffer on it, which is better to run a, a oxygen sensor directly in the exhaust. So we put that O2 bung. Right, right. I did get a video of that. Now, did you take the old O2? It, so, yes. so that's stock. not even out. It's out completely. Yeah. Okay. So that way it doesn't have its closed loop area. Okay. All right. And we can make changes with that program and it doesn't change that closed loop. Oh, uh, okay. Area. Did that affect, is a is warning light on or no? no you had that little. Yeah, there's a plug on that wire harness side where that hose is. Right. In. Okay. And basically that plug is there to stabilize that reading to the ECU so it doesn't change. Okay. Uh, so when you make changes with a, like a feedback system or whatnot, you know, those changes stay the same. Okay. Can we take a look at the overall uh, graph here real quick? Um, I just want to take a look at how the torque curve looks compared to the horsepower. Um, that one, that was the 100%. This is the 100%, right. So, looks like, so this is our horsepower, this is our torque. Crosses over at always at, what, 40, what is it, 40? Five something? <laughs> uh, that's like uh, 525. 525. Yeah. And there's our numbers we had max horsepower 24.82 and max torque 24.39 so very similar um torque curve i guess for a what a 465 cc uh, somewhat flat I'll, I'll say not 
I mean, you definitely, single cylinder, you're always going to have more torque and lower RPM. It's right. Almost like, it, it, it almost looks like a diesel compared to that. Yeah. I mean, you got a lot of torque here, but. And then it really drops up. up. And then the, it, but there's a, just a fat ton of torque right here. Yeah, I mean, that's all. Cool. And it's not, you're not even moving much in the low. And this is what, uh, what's the RPM right here? So you're at 3,200 to say torque drops off really at like 550. Okay. 5 so you can kind of guess it's, you can probably see it maybe 2,500. You can. Yeah, I mean, usually I can't get. Like you think good? Well, this is 100% run. So okay, if I right. tried to give it throttle below there, plus there's a little bit of delay between when you can get to 100%, the bike will accept that based on, you know, um, how much air it's sucking the cams, okay. if it has secondary throttle plates, which I don't think this one does. Uh, but, no. Yeah. Um, and I just noticed, so on the, the horsepower here, it, it drops, but not dramatically. No, um, there is a, uh, so I did do a graph. I took okay. the timing out yeah. that they had in there. Yeah. So they had a bunch of timing changes in here. Okay. And that was the stock timing, and it would only make 22.8. So we got a two horsepower difference just and, on the timing. And I didn't even, I didn't like graph. This graph. isn't for it or anything. Gotcha. Like that. Okay. It's just, uh, and if you wanted one like that, I could do something like that. That's fine. Um, all right, what other uh, thoughts can you tell me? Um, no, just ride it, see how it goes. And okay, then, uh, did, you, did you ride it? Or you just uh, I just rode it around the building. What would you I think when you rode it? Um, single cylinder bike. Low horsepower you know, single yeah. cylinder bike, right? <laughs> but you normally do big horsepower bike. I mean, you... Well, 600, 1000, something Okay. Like that. So, I mean, we do some ninja stuff or whatever, but... Okay. Um, and did you do the uh, uh, oil change and tap it? Yes. How, how hard was that or was it pretty nah, easy? That was pretty easy. Okay, yeah. cool. Well, I'm going to shake your hand here. Maybe we can get that on video here. Thank you much. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go ahead and ride it around. I'll give you my thoughts. There's MRP Motorsports. Again, I'll put a link in the description. Thank you, Kenny. Much appreciated. And we'll, uh, we'll talk to you. All right, guys. There's my Himalayan. I'm going to go test it for a ride. Um, and we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, you heard uh, me talking with Kenny. We'll see how it feels and see if there's anything uh, uh, that I can tell the difference. Since the